Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and I'm back for another episode. This week I'm joined by my lovely LS, Miss Crystal or uh, Miss Chris. Hello, hello. Going by these days for the people. (laughs) I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I feel like I haven't seen you in, in forever. It's been a minute. Well, it's been almost a month now. Well, it has been a month now, actually. With the, yeah. with the COVID, it makes it feel like it's been an extremely long time. Right. Can't just, can't just do like, hey, what you doing? I'm about to come over here these days. Yeah, no. I'm, I have not had, a, or we have not had a brunch since January? Like one of our brunches? Since January. It's been that long. Like, you know, you you are actually still well. You're still I was gonna say like you're going to work. You have physically returned to work, and so I, that is very different than my world. It is, and I be on a hope and a prayer every day when I have to go up in there. Um, I be masked up. Um, not a fan of having to go in, but. It is what it is. I'm happy to just still have be employed for so many who do not have employment right now. Yes, I'm happy that you are too, but that actually also, you know, kind of, I guess, switching to, I typically start every episode with something that I'm grateful for. So I know we can leave it at you being grateful for being employed, but if there's something else that you want to share that you are grateful for, whether it's a person, a place, a thing, whatever, um, you know, something that you're grateful for today, this week? Well, I would say I'm grateful to be um, amongst the living, as the old, as the elders say. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to not be um, sick with COVID or any other disease. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm grateful for. All righty. Well. That's that is beautiful. I'm happy to see you in your in your shirt. I think it does it say melanin. It does. Melanin um, queen. Oh, melanin queen. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. I like that. I like that. Well, um, I am also grateful or glad to be among the living and employed. Um, and I talked a lot about that in the last episode of just some different things and people that I'm grateful for. But today among other things, I am grateful for these earrings that I'm wearing. Um, <laughs> Be kind, Ramey, the Marigold collection release. So shout out to you. And if you all don't know about it or about her and these wonderful, one of a kind, limited edition, I'll say uh, these specifically. Uh, but I feel like all of her stuff is limited edition just because it's handmade. It's, they're all beautiful. Um, and you can follow her at Be Kind Remay on Instagram. But I'm grateful that these came and I get to wear them. I haven't worn them outside yet. But hey, this is kind, this has become my outside because y'all get to see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for them. And they are definitely, I was concerned that they were going to be too heavy. But they're not. They're light. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay. So, um, like I said, it feels like it feels like it's been a while since I've seen you. Or we've been able to hang out. Um, you know, yeah, we we talk or we do. We're in some group chats together, and that's cool. But I, like I said, I'm working from home, and so most of my world is in these four walls. Um, outside of you know, I go bike riding, go for walks, uh, go out to stores when needed. But you have returned to the office. And so I just wanted, I guess, you know, I guess, share with me, with, with those listening, what that is like or what that transition has been um, in the midst of COVID. Because I know at first you were working from home or you guys were just, I think when everything shut down, you guys were just, nobody come here, we're done. So yeah, if you could just, you know, share a little bit about your experience from March till now. Well, um In the beginning, uh, I'll say February, let's start in February. Uh, You know, as you know, we didn't think it was going to be this. 
And That's up awesome. until probably mid March, we were still on, you know. That's it's just a you know a, a hit or miss thing. It's really just overseas. It don't got nothing to do with us. Um, and it was probably about the end of March, the, the third week of March, when I got ready to go in, and actually a, a teammate had um, tested positive for COVID, and I had to go home and be on quarantine for three weeks and to get medically cleared to come back in to um, work. And I will say that that was probably the scariest time because uh, being told that you may be possibly have contracted a fatal virus, potentially fatal um, virus, uh, is your mind starts to play tricks with you on, do I have this? Like, is this, I, you know, I sneeze, do I have it? Um, and and honestly, I actually tried to get tested, and they wouldn't test. Uh, they wouldn't test me. They uh, said that um, you had to be outwardly showing symptoms at that time. And they also told me that I needed to um, make moves or assume that I, I am um, presumptive positive. And they um, treated me as, as such as I was presumptive positive. Right. Um, um, like I said, she was on my team. She sits. She sat right right behind me. Thank God she's she's fine. She's actually returned to work herself. Okay, that's um, I was wondering. I'm happy to hear yeah, that. Yes, yeah, she actually turned returned to work herself. Um, and again, she was in New York the week before, and we just nobody knew New York was the hot spot. Nobody, you know, this like the week after we went on quarantine is when we learned about how bad things were in New York, but. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if I can't say if I had COVID or I didn't have COVID because I haven't, there's been, I, you know, I never was tested and they treated me as if I was presumptive positive. I'm, I'm happy that she is okay and has fully yes. recovered. Yes. Oh, and also that, you know, as far as we know, you did not have it or as far as I know. at least no symptoms from it. And so. Correct. Um, correct. And then. So I was home for three weeks and then got clear. I came back into the office, but it was like I may be in for a few days, few days home, or I'm home. I'm working from home one week in the office one week. But at the beginning of this month, I, you know, I accepted a new position at work and on a new team. And my new team is in like every day, which has had an adjustment for me because going in every day now, I'd be tired because I'm like, my <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Got used to being at home. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to being at home. I'm used to like rolling over. I can do work and then, you know, um, but I'm having to be actively engaged every day of, you know, so it's been an adjustment of going back in to the office, but um, it keeps me busy. I'm, I'm sure. It does. Especially with, as you know, the fiscal year closeout is coming and and stuff. So it's, it's really busy time. So I'm looking forward to some kind of reprieve in October. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we're all looking forward to some kind of reprieve. Yours is going to be a little different because you still work in like the world, like nothing changed. But right. I guess that's one of the things I'm curious about of just. I know you said for a little while or for some months, it was going for a couple of days, be off. Um, but now that you're back, I guess just what are some of the things and from a, I guess from a safety precaution standpoint, like what are some things that they've done at your job or that you're doing to just make sure you're protecting yourself? Well, we have to get, you know, temperature screens before we go in. Most, most businesses are actually doing those, but we have to get screened before we go in um, for temperature. We have to be masked, um, as hand sanitizer everywhere. <laughs> Stay washing our hands, um, and we're spaced out. Um, now everybody isn't back. It's just my new section is back, um, okay. and then eventually, you know, eventually, everybody is going to return in some form of fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will, I will say to those who 
may be apprehensive about going in. Um, mask. Don't be around people. I'm 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 a proponent. I'd be like you like somebody have to come ask me a question. I'd be like, I prefer <laughs> you, just, you just email me or send me a, a instant message at work. Um just not really trying to be around people like that. But we be we we be masked up and you know eventually, like I said, we all gonna have to return in some kind of way, whether it be every day or like a few days a week because it's an adjustment to go back in once you've been gone out for so long and when you get ready to go back into the office it's going to be an adjustment I don't I don't even know how to process that <laughs> like and you would think you would think that well I haven't been working in the office for six months but I've been working for like 15 years but it's you'd be different. surprised how fast that change is. I'm not surprised at all because <laughs> I know just when I would go on vacation or take a few days off or let alone like back in January when we went um, when we went on the cruise, which, yeah. you know, hopefully that'll be a thing again. But when I, I took, I think I took like a couple days before and after the cruise off because like I just made that my, that was my vacation after a while. And just going back after then, it was like, whoo, you want me to sit here all day? <laughs> all day? Like, you know, in clothes. You know. And because at home, I get, I still get up, I get dressed, bra most, most days. <laughs> other, other times, it was like, I'm home. And I'm grateful because most of my work is, it's via the computer or phone calls. Like, I, because I know a lot of people, they're doing a lot of Zoom meetings. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm not having to do a lot of that. So you don't have to see me. They don't. They don't know. That. Just I need to be awake and alert. Yeah, and I sit I, at my desk. And so going back into a physical office, it's just like, who Jesus? It's a, different, it's a different mindset. And I will say, back to January when we went on the cruise, or even before cruise with Centennial, it's like, who knew? how crazy this would be. I look back at our photos and we was having the time of our life <laughs> in January. That's how I feel like we was having the time of our life, living our best life. Yep. And like who knew COVID was around the corner and it could have already been here. I mean, according to reports, it's been here since November. Um, and it was all up in, in each other's personal space and just around people. And I wonder, like, my mom wonders, like, when we went on that cruise and we came back, so many of us were sick. Yeah. But it, but it didn't make sense because, like, I came, I did come back sick. You know, I wasn't sick when we landed um, on that Monday, but by Friday I was in the ER. And, you know, we were talking about upper respiratory infection, ear infection, sinus infection. They couldn't figure it out. And then I went back to the ER again on Sunday. Still couldn't figure it out. Then a lot of my team went out sick because I went in that Friday after I came from the ER. I went in to the office, left early, back at the ER on Sunday, and then was out that week. I wonder, you know, was it? And then, like, and if it, if it was, then how wasn't you sick? Or was you asymptomatic and you just didn't know? I mean, it's just it's just all it's kind amazing. of theory. But it's, yeah. it's trust really me because I was trying to figure that out because we roomed together and I felt like I might have been sick, but I think it was just you just don't want to go to work. <laughs> um, but that was it. But there, like you said, there were so many people um, that had some. I know some people had pneumonia. Some people had colds or just. The, all type because it was what a thousand it was well what close to two thousand people on that ship total yeah. or however many people it can hold but like of the ones you know in the group we were with it was at least a thousand so yeah and I mean a good 80 85 percent of people came back legit sick like some of them <laughs> hospitalized sick um and I, I wonder it's just but we had the time of our life in January feels like it was two years ago because so much has changed drastically. Yep. Um, and, January. and January felt like three months itself. Yes. 
So, so it feels like a really, really long time. And even for those going back to school, I'm like, it feels like you just got out, but it's like the concept of time. There's no concept of time. Um, and I'm a, I'm more of an introverted person. You know, I, I, I can't, I like being alone. You know, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm ready to go home and be alone. Um, but it's something when uh, you actually miss interactions with people. And I probably handle being inside better than others, probably better than you, because I am, probably a you. <laughs> I am a homebody and I enjoy my alone time. Um, but sometimes, you know, I do just miss being able to say, hey, what you doing? I, you feel like doing my hair? Or, hey, you want to do brunch? Our brunch? Or, you know, do you want to go to happy hour or to the movies or something? And you can't really do that. First off, the movies are closed and I wouldn't want to be in there anyway right now. No, but... I think um, some of them are opening back up tomorrow or this weekend. Oh. I got an, actually, I got... I got an, I think I got like two emails this week that said they're opening. I think a Regal, Regal is opening back up. They may already be open, but they're opening this week. And then the one, um, I think it's Next X Cinema, the, the black owned one up in Baltimore. They're opening back up tomorrow or Friday, um, Labor Day weekend. So. No, if I trust it. I'm, 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 I'm actually. Because I, I like going to the movies. Like you said, that's one of the things we would do. Um, and I've been thinking about it of like, what is it? I guess it's, what is that going to look like? Because I know when things first started shutting down, I remember AMC was sending stuff out saying that they were only going to be selling, like they were going to limit the number of tickets or limit capacity in the individual theaters. And people were only going to be able to sit, you know, a seat or two apart. Like those were the things they were doing initially. So it's like now that you all are opening back up, what are they doing and what's that going to look like in terms of precaution? Because I know pretty much you got to wear a mask anywhere. So it's like, am I going to have to wear this mask the whole movie? Yeah. Are you, are you going to be able to eat popcorn or drink a drink? And then on right. top of that, are, how, are they going to clean those seats in between? Um, right. Because I know they they clean in between, but I'm pretty sure it didn't involve wiping seats down. So yeah, it's just like, I guess that's the the question I've been asked. I'm sure most of us are, but just for myself of just like, okay, as, as I'm preparing to move forward into this new reality, because a vaccine has yet to be um, developed. Um, they haven't figured out exactly how it's, you know, no one can say specifically how it's spreading or how you contract it and to being able to, you don't know when you you have it, if you're asymptomatic, all of these different things, but it's like, okay, at the same time, life has to continue. And does. what does and that look like? I, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to go to wine festivals or festivals and general concerts and I can't say at what point I would be comfortable doing so. I right. mean, we hope for next year, but honestly, if we was to go, to, I mean, would you be comfortable going to a festival next year, or would you have to be masked up? Like it, it is. Things are different, and how you interact with people has to be different, and. This past weekend, uh, Tanya flew in from California for the for the march, and she wanted to meet up for brunch Sunday before she flew out, and we met up, and we were supposed to have outdoor seating, and they put us on the inside. And my anxiety was, like, high, because, one, I haven't been in a restaurant since February. And I know that she had been out at the march. Right. So, like, the whole time we're in there, I'm masked. And then when I eat, I got it off. When I take a sip of water and then put it back on. (laughs) And, like, me and her interaction is different because, I mean, this is somebody I've been known since we both was 18 years old. And 
we can't even interact like we normally would. It, instead of a hug, it's like an elbow bump. It's just really different. And even though you can see somebody, or even like when me and you went to Richmond, it was kind of like you had your side of the house, I had my side. <laughs> me in the car, but we're like, you know, trying to keep our distance in the car and then wiping down stuff when we get in and out. It's just really different interactions. It's kind of like you have to view that person like, you know, they got a virus. And like I told her, I have to interact with you because I would hate for me to have it and not know I have it and give it off and then you, your body can't fight it off. Um, and that's probably my my fear more so than anything is giving it to somebody who and it takes them away from here. Oh well, yeah, I know you. You and I have talked about that, and granted, like I said, we are in different situations because you are actually going out, going to work every day. You're not necessarily interacting with people, but you are around, and you're in, you're in a public space. So you know, quote unquote, public space around other people because you don't know what they're doing when they leave work, what their home life is like. So you are exposed you have a greater risk of exposure or greater probability of exposure to the virus or other things in general mm -hmm. than I do because at this point for the me going out is solely bomb, like it's by choice yeah. um, because I guess in theory most things can be delivered so me going out of the house it's when I choose to and yeah. it is limited like I don't I don't go out every single day um, and so it's like, for me, being mindful of that, and, and that's kind of part of why I wanted to talk, I guess, wanted us to talk about this and just to like that transition, because it's, in many respects for you, life has returned to some level of normal in that you're back to work, but even that's different because it's not everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and you're wearing a mask all day at work, um, but outside of work, you're going home like so you're you know the social home. aspect it has like have. social has become at least 80 80 to 90 percent online yeah. and for me like i said i wasn't one that was out a whole lot i like i am an introvert i like to think of myself as a homebody <laughs> um quarantine you like to be in them streets more than i do quarantine proved proved me wrong because I was definitely going crazy or not going crazy but start crazy struggle about what was that like the end of middle of May June yeah, and I'm like, like I was just riding places just for the sake of riding just to get out of the house it's and so crazy because we literally stores. thought we literally thought this thing was gonna be like a two-week thing and like it's literally been it's what? been five months yeah and this is six going on six months in a few weeks it'll be six months and I, yeah I thought for sure that by now even when it was like oh okay April is still here okay well by August yeah because we, we kept saying when the heat comes we kept saying you know when it get hot it'll kill the virus like the flu I don't know who told us that lie because clearly the heat was like who. You know. Go forth and prosper for this virus because it seems like it started spreading even I don't know if it, it was spreading more if it was because more people were out because it was warm but it was like that was when the spike start you know the numbers started jumping back up but either way I guess I, all of that my question for you is you know taking all of that into consideration what is it going to take for you to feel more comfortable resuming some of the social um, social activities like i know you said you went to di you went to brunch or dinner and initially it was we're going to be outside but then you had to sit inside like knowing i guess how did that i know you said your anxiety was high but just like how are you I mean, feeling now like i like maybe i should go get a covid test see if i can try the covid this is how and this is how bad it is and i think that um, you know, for a while, you could be like, well, it's people that you see on TV. Then it became people that you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, whether they had it or end up passing from it, like then it starts, you know, becoming, and I think about back home where people went, there's a gentleman that passed away. He, he, he didn't pass away from COVID, but him and my dad, who was deceased, they were really good friends um, when my dad was living and he, he passed away maybe about a month ago now. And they had like 75 people at the funeral, people not wearing masks. And then they had a cookout for, you know, after the funeral. And then all these people contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. And, and then the death toll is now steady going up. I mean, it, it's it's one thing when you see it on like CNN, and it's another thing when you see it in your own community. Yeah, no, it, it definitely hits different. Because um, I just so I, eventually, like I would feel comfortable going out if we're doing out outdoor dining, so patio dining. I would be comfortable with that. Um, I'm definitely not comfortable with the movies. I know it's going to take some time to get just readjusted. And we're talking about a person who loves the movies, who, you know, enjoys getting up and going to happy hour and stuff. And, I mean, I think we're all going to be different. Even when we were at brunch, even how the servers were was different, you know, they're masked up, they have paper um, menus, and after you finish with them, trashed. Oh, you know, wow, okay. They didn't keep, um, they didn't keep salt shakers and stuff on the table. They gave you individual packs if you needed it. Mm-hmm. They didn't want transmission. Right. And, um, so just, just different uh, for them as well, and different of, I mean, they, they're um, they have really good plastic wear because they weren't using silverware. Right, right, right. And so things things are just different. And I think that it's going to take us all a moment to reacclimate. But we would have to start seeing some, you know, improvement in numbers, potential vaccine. And I do want to say that um, our community. Um, you know, was apprehensive about participating in vaccination trials. Not saying I'm going to go out and participate. (laughs) um, We're apprehensive about participating in a vaccine trial and drug trials, but um, in general, um, there can't be a vaccine created without the black community participation. Um, One, we're um, contracting and dying from it at higher rates than our Caucasian counterparts, and if they was to create a vaccine without it being tried in in us, um, it could not work, and we would be on the outside looking in, essentially. Um, And we were just having this discussion today earlier because um, two HBCUs down in Louisiana is um, was requesting like you know, volunteers because they're participating in the medical research. One of them has a medical program and then, um, you know, working on crafting um, Mm -hmm. a vaccine. And there is a vaccine out here on CNN that's in this phase three of the trial. Yeah, isn't it the one that was like the FDA fast-tracked it or something? Yeah, there's one that's like... It seemed a little shady. Globally, there's like a bunch of companies, maybe 99 globally, that have been, you know, working on this a vaccine because it ain't just a, a U.S. problem or mm-hmm. a problem, you know. But we we um we unfortunately aren't, you know, things have happened in the past that make us not want to bless you, Thank um, you. make you not want to make us not want to participate, but. We're oh, most definitely. Views. We we yeah. have plenty of reason to plenty question reason. the question doctors and testing and but well, you know what? the prior country to, in general. Prior to COVID, every 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 uh, medicine that you take and every medicine that you see a commercial for has been through trials that involved 
all races, all ages, mm-hmm. um, and all races. Um, and I, like I told them, this this is no different. It becomes different because um, the the atmosphere we're in right now, the climate makes this a different situation. Um, but definitely, we ha- do have reason to. Um, be apprehensive or against it. But eventually when a vaccine is had, I think we're all probably required to take it, um, especially if you, people who are in school and certain professions as well. Yeah. I want to say like, yeah, but then when you mentioned the thing about the, the waiters and restaurants, I realized I haven't eaten in a restaurant <laughs> either. <laughs> I was really nervous, like, and I, one of the things that kind of put me at ease was they was like, you, you, can't, you have to wear a mask to enter. However, you know, people in there talking, I mean, ain't a lot of people in there, but they're talking with their, say, spouse, and they don't have their mask on, um, but I had mine on in between eating and drinking the whole mm-hmm. time, um, and Tanya was laughing at me. But, you know, I told her she been out at the march. And I had it. And I told her, besides work, I really be in. And I hadn't even been in a grocery store since April. Oh, well, no. I go to the grocery. That is, look, <laughs> the grocery store is my social life. This is social life. <laughs> That's my <laughs> outing. Like, going to the grocery store. Um, I've been to Walmart or Target, like I've been to those places. Uh, and then recently I've started going back to some of the others. Like I went to Ross this past weekend. Um, Look at you. So yeah, you doing stuff I ain't even, so I might be at work, but you in the streets. I've booked to see, first of all, don't be saying I'm in the streets cause I ain't just out here. Okay. I, I did get out. my hair done. Well, yeah, I've gotten my hair. I have, oh Jesus, I had to go get, well not had, but I, was very, very, very grateful when I got that email and said, oh, I'm open back up, which we can schedule you. And so that was the first time was back in June, I think. So I went like four months without getting my hair retightened because of COVID and using caution. Yeah, so I've done that. I have been to a nail salon um, in stores, but like I said, everywhere that I have been, you're wearing a mask the entire time, like with the nail salons. And when I went to get my hair done, you had to, there was waivers. They took your temperature. You had a mask on, you're doing hand sanitizer. Um, Like even with my hair the entire time, she was wearing a mask, I was wearing a mask. Um, With the nail salon, like one salon I went, one nail place I went, I just wanted to get like a regular manicure. They weren't doing it because they said the way they had, Basically, the way they had it set up to keep everyone socially distanced, there mm-hmm. wasn't that station where you would go to have your nails dry. Yeah. So they weren't, they were only doing like a gel manicure or other services that didn't require where you needed to sit somewhere to dry. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, that's different. But then. I haven't did, I haven't been to get my nails done. I've been doing my own pet, my own pedicures which I have a new appreciation for. I think I'm doing really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro, get you a good foot mask. Well, yeah, foot I foot used foot. to do my, I used to do my own and I had the little, the little foot spa tub and all that stuff. I don't have those things anymore. Now, during the, when everything was shut down, I was doing my own nails and my own, I was doing my own everything. But now that they have resumed <laughs> services, <laughs> <laughs> I have patronized a few places with my mask and hand sanitizer, and I can say that thus far, I feel I have felt safe. Um, there was definitely some concern for some of the places, but like with the nail salon, I went and I was the first, well, recently, like when I went, I went and I was the first appointment, um, and it's all been appointments only. Yeah, with the things that I have done. Um, That's how it was with my hair. Um, it, I was the first person six thirty in the morning because I wanted to be the first person in there. I was in and out, 
she hooked it up. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I did go back in June. Sorry, it's storming. Yeah, and it just yeah it's me. storming here too. Yeah, I mean, it was loud. Um, the, I, well, what was I saying? That has, that has scared me. But uh, <laughs> it had threw me off. I'm sorry, people. That had threw me off because it had boomed real loud. Um, I did go in June. This is what I was saying. I went in June and got my car inspected and all of that good stuff. Got my oil changed. And um, they stood outside and waited for it. So, yeah, now that I, I got my car served. Oh, yeah, I did my oil change and all that stuff like back in March. It was like at the beginning before everything had shut. It was like stuff was starting to. And I went and had that done. Um, actually, they called me today saying, oh, you're due for service. I mean, that's one of the, I guess, the positives or upsides of COVID is that I haven't been driving as much. So I've spent significantly less on gas <laughs> and things like that because I'm not driving as much. But I, I know that's not for everyone. In March, so March, when COVID popped off, I didn't fill my car up again until July, beginning of July. I went that long on some gas. You was really not going, no. I didn't go, I thought I was doing good. I, it wasn't that much. Cause I definitely, I was, I think initially it was like a month and a half, maybe two. Uh, nah, it's a month. On tank. And now mm -hmm. I'm averaging about, well, recently a bit more. Cause I did drive to, um, I went to North Carolina recently for a funeral. So that was more, but uh, for the most part, I feel like I'm averaging like a, a tank a month. I filled my car when we went to Richmond on the way back, I think it was, maybe going, I don't remember. And that lasted me for a while and I just refilled up. So it's like, I live like seven miles from work and the, I mean, the, the, I ain't going to say bright side of COVID, but since COVID has happened, traffic has been significantly reduced. So mm -hmm. people like seven miles, that's really close. And I don't, you really think so, but here in, in the city, in D.C., those seven, seven miles was about an hour and, hour and a half. Minutes. It's been taking me like 15 minutes to get to work. Like the time it should take. <laughs> the time it should take. Seven miles. So I'm like seven miles there, seven miles back. I'm not really spending no gas. Well, that's good. Yeah. That, like I said, it's one of the things that I've been trying to do or be more intentional about, especially recently, is finding the, the simple things or the, the small victories yeah. um, or the, the small joys in the midst of COVID. And like, there's so many things that have been shut down or changed or we can't do, can't go, because, you know, the American passport is not good many places right now. Oh, yeah. uh, or I should say the U.S. Oh, yeah. passport is not very, you know, we're not welcomed a lot of places. Mm -hmm. My whole, I, I was going to Costa Rica to do my Spanish immersion program. I had enrolled and then they sent me that email. Yeah, we're not, uh, we have opened our borders to some countries, but the U.S. is not one. Yeah. Unfortunately, they um, sent me. They have like an all an online course as an alternative. But I say all that to say, like, just trying to find the positive things or what is, you know, what is going well. And as much as I am, as much as I am, over to an extent, twenty twenty. I'm also appreciative of it because in the midst of all of the the death, the sadness, the just upheaval, there have been some, I guess, silver lining, so to speak, in the sense that I do feel like overall families have been spending more time together. Um, we've returned outside in terms of just doing outdoor activities. Kids are learning what it's like to play outside because yeah. you kind of, that's, 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 that's the only option um, I, in some ways, 
at least initially, it felt like people were uniting more. Now, not so sure. I would agree. I, I, I one thing that I, um, I, one, let me just say, I love our culture because we'll make a way out of no way. We'll Girl, come up we will. Stuff. We'll come up with some stuff. Even like verses was born out of COVID. Yes. I mean, we, I've been on a many of game nights of which we haven't had one in a while. Yeah, we did that. And even though I'm over the virtual stuff, you know what? I need something. So yes. if it's going to have to be virtual, then let's have a virtual game night, please. Um, game night. I mean, even karaoke, attempting karaoke over there. <laughs> we, we have, you know, yes. I'm in awe of our people at times because we will come up with some stuff. Um, and make it seem like it was just always there. Like always there. I mean, virtual sit, painting sets, there's all kind of stuff that. Oh yeah, I did one of those. <laughs> people put together. Um, we have like amazing, amazing culture. Of people do we do some stuff. We'll we'll make a way. Um, yes, so it it has been some silver linings. Twenty twenty has been. It's going to go down in the books for sure. Um, and who really would have known just how crazy and this has been and this is the massive, unfortunate loss of life. It just, it, we, we, there's no way in January, like I said, we was living our best life. I think back, we was at brunch on February 22nd. It's so crazy. I remember that. February 22nd. We was at Farmer Fishers and Bakers. We went to go see the photograph afterwards. After oh, the, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, was I there? Oh, yeah, I was. You're right. I forgot. <laughs> Farmer Fishers and Bakers. Um, oh, for that, brunch. That was a good time. Waterfront. That was February 22nd. That was a good time. It was a really good time. We went and seen the photograph. Had us a good time. And then... I saw you at the beginning of March because I had just finished working out with Sore. I, had, I remember I had got me a trainer, start working out with my trainer. Oh, that's right, yeah. And then COVID happened because I came to came to your house, brought some clothes up, stay in the night. That was the last time I saw you until oh, I saw you that's at the right. we Did a uh, oh we was watching that uh the older people dating on yeah. Netflix. On Netflix. Seeing, oh, seeing people Netflix. or dating around, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. So was weird. when they would go out on dates. It, yes. You know. It was it was it was strange to say that. <laughs> and then it got real and it got real really fast. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. And then yeah, that was on. that was all this year. I let's see, okay. I'm thinking back. I knew that it was going to be an interesting year because on New Year's Eve, like I had gone to church, I'm leaving church to come home and I got a flat tire. So I was like, why well, ain't this something? Begin. It was like two in the morning, whatever time it was, like one or two in the morning, I'm sitting on the side waiting on the guy to come like change my tire. And I'm like, well, this is going to be interesting. But this is not what I thought interesting was going to look like. This was not it at all. I'm going to tell you something. Christmas, I was home. We, I flew into Spartanburg. And I'm there. My You know, my, my brother picked me up. And then we meet my, my mom and my sister and at, at the mall in Spartanburg at Westgate. And so we're in the store. And my mom is like, you know, I had a dream about next year. So the economy going to be bad. She's like, I don't know. I'm kind of worried for my, you know, for my stock and stuff. I just don't know. I have a bad feeling about it. So the lady in, in the store was looking like, oh, God, I'm like, my, quit. You know, scared <laughs> woman. And I was like, quit talking negative, Mom. Mom was like, well, I'm just trying to take us. I don't know. Something's not right. You know, I had a dream about the economy and, you know, the and economy tanking. And she was like, like another recession, like really bad. Mm -hmm. And um, I just can't, I can't shake it. And, you know, I'm concerned about, you know, the stock and stuff like my stock and stuff. 
And if you can see that lady's face when my mom was talking, because we <laughs> check it out in Macy's, and that lady's looking at my mom like, because the woman said, you know, how you doing? And then here go my mom talking about her dream and mm-hmm. economy tanking and things not being good next year, which ends up being 2020. And I just look it back at that, and I'm like, I wonder where that uh, we need you need y'all need to find that woman because <laughs> she's probably looking for your mom like you should have just been quiet. Why you why you had to say this? It probably is like I told. I mean, if you could have seen how she was looking at Mama in in that store, I was like, Ma, don't <laughs> quiet, Lord. And you know what? I think that, and I'm like, you know what? God speak to mama through a dream or something like how did she know? like how and then I kid you not because we're in the store and my sister's like mama is just being so negative that's what my sister <laughs> and then she I'm, I'm wondering if my sister like do you you know remember when mama said I'm gonna ask my sister about that you know when mama said that she had a bad feeling about 2020 <laughs> I mean, hey, she it, it could have, because what, discernment is real. Having a spirit of discernment is real. And so she, and even if it wasn't, you know, maybe not spot on, she was like, something don't feel right. And and I I, freak, I don't remember the pastor's name, but Kevin on stage had posted, um, in one of his podcasts, he posted, a, or talked about this pastor who um, I think he had on or something, but like on his New Year's Eve service, his message the pastor talked about like how like basically was talking about what 2020 would look like and how there was going to be all these changes and it was like almost verbatim what he said new year's eve night is what has happened in 2020 and so it is god clearly god god knew what was going to happen what was going on but and clearly he let a few folks know or let a few people was about know. To- you know, her thing was more about the economy. I mean, that the economy has it, it has changed. Been and I don't, it, has I mean, been, it has been negatively affected this year. So that's what I'm saying. I, I think I know that there are people who you know have the gift of prophecy or prophetic, or they have dreams and and things like that. So I, I'm really believing that. Although most of us <laughs> were caught off guard <laughs> and were surprised by what has happened this year, there are some that I believe God like either told or showed, gave them glimpses and bits and pieces of pieces of what to come in terms of being able to prepare. Um, but even this, it's how, I don't know how you could have prepared for this. There's, certain, there's so much, it's because it's, some things, okay, yeah, but for people who are like, oh, I stockpile on my toiletries and all these other mm-hmm. things, the coupon people, like, the extreme couponers, yeah, they had stockpiles of stuff. In that case, you might be prepared, but how do you prepare for everything changing? Like, the way we do everything has changed. There's, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know how you prepare. Clearly, they weren't prepared because school has started back some places or is supposed to start back, and they're still trying to figure out how this distance learning goes. I know that parents, you know, got to work and I'm not a parent. And I try to think about if I was a parent and, and my thought process is if I was a parent, and again, I'm not, <laughs> if I was a parent, I I just couldn't let it happen. I don't, I don't know. But what you like, doing, like distance learning or them going back to school? Going back. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how, because a lot of the places that, because, you know, down south, they start earlier. Yeah. A, a lot of the places, colleges included, they started off like, oh, yeah, come back. And they've had to shut down and go back to being virtual because it's, it's how do you contain it in a school? A school is already just, it's full of people. So it's like a, lo- school is a logistical nightmare to begin with, let alone trying to do it in a way that, you're not you're limiting you know, people passing school so you know kids kids get sick and my, like my nephew he's a senior in college um oh wait, wait. Hold, hold up hold up what you mean 
It's been that much time that has passed. It's been that much time, dude. Wasn't I still time. working there when he when he his freshman year? Yeah. Well, then yeah, that makes sense. That was what two thousand sixteen when he's fifteen or sixteen he 16. started. So sixteen. So he. Oh no, 16. that was right after he started. No. Right after I stopped working. Twenty seventeen. Sixteen. I thought it was sixteen. Either sixteen or seventeen, 20. one of them. But okay, I have been seventeen. Cause he, cause he's he he was really so. No, it was sixteen. Cause he was supposed to, he's supposed to come out. Um, he's supposed to come out this May. So it is sixteen, but he changed his major. Okay. So he's coming. And he's supposed to. He was supposed to come out this fall. So since he changed his major, it only put him behind a semester. But with COVID. All the classes, the class that he needs is not um, in offer. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be on campus next semester for one class um, to take. But uh, dude is a senior. Oh, buddy. And he's doing virtual this semester. And um, shout out to North Clemson University. So at my alma mater, that's where he's at. Um, and He's like, man, I knew that this wasn't going to work because they've had an outbreak as well on Bang, in Baines Hall. Um, of course it's Baines. In Baines. Um, within like three days of classes starting. I believe um, it because I know um, Temple, when they, they, I was just talking to someone earlier today, they, their son um, just started at Temple. He was like, we moved him in on Friday and then went back Saturday to go pick him up because there was an outbreak and or not an outbreak, but there were some cases. Yeah. And so they announced, I know the school announced today that they're going virtual. So it was like all those people who moved in. Got to move them out. We'll move out. And and all it. UNC, ECU, Central, and state I mean, all of them have had, um, and it's been, a, some of them have been athletes. I saw where the University of Alabama has, has had over a thousand cases in a oh, week. Wow. Um, so, you know, it's unfortunate and things look, you know, real different and schools are taking hits with, with funding as well. Um, so, yeah, it's there's, just, I think there's a couple schools like private schools who they have returned in person here in Maryland. Um, Shaw returned in person, and I haven't heard anything about any outbreaks, but I think what they're doing is that, and, and you know, Shaw is private, small and private, and mm -hmm. it's also in the city of Raleigh, downtown, so I don't know how they're going to do this, but I think that they put in their students in a bubble, essentially, like, oh, but they, I think if they, it would be easier for them to do that, because the campus is small, the, you know, like school-wise, the numbers are already relatively small. Correct. I don't know how well that bubble's going to work considering they're in Raleigh. That's what I'm saying, considering you're in downtown, so you're in the thick of like every, you know, everything. And then yeah. you have locals who may come on the yard. But um, we shall see. I haven't heard any any cases with them, so we'll see how. Well. I hope it I hope it works. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's so many things. But overall, like I said, I'm happy to know that you are doing well. Same, same, your same. Family is and although you have had to physically return to work. I've um, had to physically return to work. One of the you know, um one of the I guess one of the bigger things. It was kind of two things, twofold, but one thing is, like, you know, I like to be home and I like to be in. But, you know, I like to do, I like to have the option, <laughs> you know, go I, out. And the option has really been eliminated in a lot yeah, of. I like to have the option to tell you, no, I don't want to. Option, correct. And that's been taken away. And then, and then the biggest thing, though, is um, I haven't been able to go home and see my people. Um, in North Carolina, and I haven't, even my extended family here in Baltimore and in Richmond um, and Dinwiddie, I haven't been able to see them as well. Um, one, um, my great aunt down in Dinwiddie is, is 
elderly. And then the ones in Baltimore have small kids. And so um, we're hoping maybe to be able to get up but in a park and spread out yeah. but without the kids because you don't want the kids to play with each other, even though they're cousins and, you know, they want to see each other. But you just never know. You know limited exposure. Um, but I haven't been able to go home, and I was supposed to be home in March for my granny's 99th birthday, and then uh, so I didn't get to go home for that, and I was going to be home in April, didn't get to go home. I was supposed to be home in August. Right. Still didn't get to go home. I was supposed to be home in October, and these aren't like, well, I was going to be going home back to back to back to back like that. This is actually... You just kept rescheduling, like pushing it back. You reschedule every time. So well, hopefully, hopefully the October one can stick. October has been canceled. Oh. And, but December, I said come, even if I have to come back and be on the quarantine, it, whatever has to happen, I, I will be making a trip home come December. Um, but currently, um, my county, my home county, if you, um, go, you have to quarantine when you get there. And oh. then, and then when I get back, you'd have to, quarantine. have to quarantine. Um, and so my mom actually was like, you know, just wait and come in December and spend longer. Well, yeah, so like I said, what I'm going to do. And my granny's just like, I miss my people. That's what she said. I miss my people. Because even though, you know, I'm not there and I don't live there, she doesn't even get to see her grandkids that are right. there um, because of COVID. And they'll come, you know, they'll pull up and talk to her through the window. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not the same. Be around. Yeah, they can't really be around her like that. And at 99, you know, we're just trying to make sure Right, not gonna take any good. chances. Yeah, and so um, and she is doing really well, um, but um, yeah, it's just it's just different, and I haven't been able to you know see my folks, so I'm excited about being able to get to the country. Uh, so. You love the country. I am a country girl. Yeah. Living in the city. I'm a I'm I, I I like to say I'm country adjacent. Adjacent? Yeah. And your people is straight out the country on both. That's why I said I'm country adjacent because yeah. I didn't grow up in the country. In the country. I've certainly visited and spent a good amount of time there and I was well, raised by from the country. That's folks from, that's the, from country. the country. So you know, I'm country adjacent. Country adjacent. Country. I am definitely from the country. Um, shout out to, I want to give a shout out to Southwestern North Carolina, the 828 704. You're not going to say the city. Town. And the 864. She interrupted me. The 864, South Carolina Upstate. Um, shout out to my home county of Rutherford County, North Carolina. Um, small town friendly. <laughs> that's our, that's the motto you ride by that's what the sign says so wait country. what is the town called Forest, you, city you. north carolina Vendale, north carolina and rutherfordton north carolina thank you yeah. you know people there are some folks might know about it you never know some people might do know about it but i'm gonna tell you i'm north carolina born and bred and in north carolina we're big on area codes so when we shout out an area code you know the area yes so, lord that is true i i, I want to give a shout out to the whole state of north carolina from the 252 to 910 to 919 336 so yeah, I guess if I'm if I'm gonna claim some area some North Carolina area codes, I'd have to claim two five two nine one zero and nine one nine. Well, no, and it's a little bit of seven zero four. It's seven zero four. I got folks in the three three six as well. I'm trying to tell you, and eight two eight used to be seven zero four up until oh. about two thousand. The whole the whole from Charlotte, well, was from Salisbury really. Southbury all the way to Asheville was 704 and then in 2000 
they were running out of um, phone numbers and they created <laughs> yeah. so eight two eight is a new area code. Okay. And actually, you know, line the state in general because there's some places that are three three six that used to be nine one zero, and gotcha. some places that were two five two that now are nine one nine. So they did a reorg of the area code across the state. But shout out to the entire state. Shout out to my good people. I gotta shout my good friends out. <laughs> oh my goodness! I just gotta do this for y'all. I'm doing it for the culture. I'm doing it for my state. <laughs> well, you two might five well, two. Uh, Bertie County, <laughs> Weldon, Ahoski, Roanoke Rapids. Don't leave out of this city. All them, as I said, Scotland, Nick, Rich Square, all my good people around there. Have a lot of friends from college there, born and raised there. Shout out to them. Also, shout out to Warsaw, Burgall, Wilmington area, Penda County. A lot of good friends there, too. I don't have any friends there, but I just want to shout out Duplin County. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the best wines in the I, state of I, My Duplin winery, my Muscadine wine, I do appreciate you all. and We miss y'all. If you hear you this know. or see this, feel free to send us some of your wine. We miss you. We <laughs> miss you and the festival that y'all have every September. We used to oh, be. yes. Which oh, I also, doubt is gonna happen I wanna, this year. I want to shout out my second favorite winery. I'm sorry to say second favorite, but y'all actually hold, hold my favorite wine of all. Old North State Winery, Mount Airy, North Carolina. Shout out to y'all. Amazing wine that y'all have. Yes. I miss home a lot. Um, what's, what's the one up here that be having the festival? It it it. Linganore Winery. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to talk bad about Linganore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. We like Muscadine wines. That's all. Yeah. We not. We, we don't want to say anything bad about Linganore Winery. Y'all have a really nice festival, especially that reggae festival. The have. reggae one, and ooh, I don't remember the group that was there, but they were the um the reggae band. It was real good. It was real good, and then um, one of the vendors was it the Bunt Cake. It was a, it was a, no, it was a honey bun cake. It was a honey bun? I might have North Carolina thing. I don't know if that's what that was. Well, it was one of the vendors that, that, it was nothing but cake, I think. But it was like bunt, the word bunt was in it. I don't know, but it was amazing. I, I, I've always I, liked, look, I've always liked food, but I feel like quarantine has turned me into even more of like, I just, a greater appreciation for food and things. Um, which is another reason why I need to get out the house. Well, you know, being on this up and down weight loss journey, journey, I'm trying to stay away from the cake, the cake world. I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay away from that. But I do enjoy amazing wine. Duplin, I want to tell you that my last sister Latavia brought me seven bottles of wine from y'all. I put in a, a order. I just said, you know, I've been wanting me a bottle of y'all Black River Red because that's my favorite. That's my one of my favorites that y'all have, and and um and Ballhead Ballhead Island wine too. I like that one too. And she brought me seven bottles. I was expecting one Duplin, but she came through seven bottles in a bag. She done found in a wine store in Maryland, and that's hard. Yeah. We didn't even, we wine store. It's a liquor store because Maryland you can't buy wine in the grocery store. So she had that's one the on the hunt. But yeah, like I'm gonna say it again. So Duplin, if y'all, you know, if you you hear me, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, and feel free to send us some. You know, I I now I will say I found some up here in Maryland, but some the ones some specific ones I I had to order from the directly from them, and thankfully they shipped it here. Um, because I will say I've always liked Carolina Red, but I got a care the res the Carolina Red Reserve. It's good. That one was really be good. Better. Like that's that has become my new favorite, and they also have a sparkling rosé that is really good as well. But this before this turns into a whole wine review. <laughs> well, I do want to say one thing. I also want to shout out Oliver Winery in Bloomington, Indiana. I've never even been to Indiana, let alone. Oh. But Oliver Winery, I ordered several bottles from y'all at the beginning of COVID. And I just want to say, 
amazing wine. That peach pie wine, that blackberry moscato, the blueberry moscato. Y'all really, really, really got some really good wine. Shout out to y'all. I forgot about them. I think I had a rosé from them too, but it whatever whatever I did, it was good. Had a sangria from them too. So it was a sangria. Rosé and a sangria. It was good and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> It's been gone. <laughs> we we didn't know anything about y'all. We've ne- I've never I don't know about her, but I've never been to Indiana. But we came across Oliver Winery, Winery in a wine group on Facebook. Oh, that's right. Um, I've been to Indiana, but not where the winery is. Um, you know what? That that's gonna have to be a, another one day. Yes, we gonna we gonna review we do a wine review and yes. You know, and matter of fact, know I know someone someone I went to school with. Um, she has her own wine. So shout out to Lovely Wines. Uh, I'm going to have to see if I can get her on the podcast to um, talk a little bit about her experience as well. But yes. I can't be a Somali because I, I, people be like, I taste hints of. <laughs> yes, and no. I just be like, it's good or it's not. Right. And like, I not like it. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't get all of what you're saying. I appreciate it. I yeah. appreciate the time and energy that went into this and the attention to detail. They make my a lot of buds, money, too. People yes, my know. taste buds appreciate it. It's but like they have you. not matured enough to be able to identify all of the different types. You just go along with it. Do you, taste, do you taste the hint of nutmeg? Yes. That's <laughs> even the ambiance. Yes, 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 yes. I do, I do, what I you do say? think I taste that. I do. Mm-hmm. You got a front, you know, you be like, taste it. You remember I taste taste this and say, but can't you taste can't you taste the <laughs> shit of blackberry in this? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Right over here on the side. Mm-hmm. On the side. I can taste that. Yeah. You know what? Well, the first time I went to a wine festival or wine tasting actually, it was with uh, my ex from back in the day and I had went with his parents to Duplin and and I didn't know that the little crackers were like to, you know, clean the palate. Clean your palate. The <laughs> you just it. It. Yeah, so we were just like kind of snacking on the way in, and the way, you know, she was like, What, what happened to your crackers? <laughs> and he was like, What do you mean? And he was like, We ate them. And she was like, You're supposed to like eat them, you know, after you drink, taste the wine, you're supposed to then eat the mm-hmm. crackers, clean the palate. And we did not know, I, you know, hilarious moment because he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, mean? y'all should put a sign here that said. <laughs> we was in Duplin. We was at Duplin Winery doing mm-hmm. wine tasting. And it was hilarious. Yes. Well, hopefully, I, but I've seen where, I've seen like from people that I know, like on in social media, they've posted where they have gone to different wineries and they've done wine tasting so those are still happening i think you they just are have to, they're outside now they well, do yeah you just have to thing. find i guess you got to find one that's open or that you feel comfortable so we need to find one yeah would you wait one. would you feel comfortable doing that yeah actually you know i was talking about going um to the mountains in virginia and that in nelson county that's where all the vineyards for the most part vineyards wineries um distilleries, cideries, um, breweries are all out there for the state of Virginia. All, all Can you leave Virginia? So you can't leave Virginia yet, right? Um, where am I Where am I going? It depends on where I'm going. Maryland? Duplin, Duplin County? Oh, we, we'll talk. We got to see what, what, they, what it's looking like. Duplin, oh. it is not me. I just want to say this because I love y'all. I've been several times. Um, I also, just a last shout out, and it ain't got nothing to do with wine, but I do want to shout out my favorite cider. So I'm a cider beer drinker. I love cider beer. I don't like beer, but I like ciders. Bull Rock, Virginia, North Carolina. I've been to Bull Rock. Amazing. Also, my to a good follow-up, Virginia cider, Blue Toad. Awesome. Awesome cider. Nelson County, Virginia. I don't know about these, but I know about Bull Rock. I don't know about Blue Toad, but yes. So clearly, so our next outing trip needs to be to uh, a winery. So winery. We need to go to Nelson County. We can go to Devil's Backbone. That's a distillery. 
Oh, okay. So that was like, mm, I don't want to play with nobody's backbone, but okay. The devil's backbone. Um, really good spot since down there in Virginia. We went last year um, back in March. March, it was kind of cooler. But yeah, October would be a good time to go. And they're probably doing tastings by appointment too. So, or limiting the amount of people and they're doing them outside. So, well, that sounds so good. Yeah, have a good, a really good cider. I'm trying to tell y'all, if y'all have not tried a cider, before I moved up here to the DMV area, I really wasn't, I didn't, had never had them. I don't drink beer. But um, I started out with drinking um, uh, Angry Orchard, and I'm not even a fan of them anymore. Sorry, Angry Orchard, it's a little too sweet for me. Um, but and then I, you know, my palate drew. So I like Aces and Blue Toe, Bow Rock. Them are some of my three. Favorite. Oh, um, there's one out of Florida that's really good. I had it when we were in Florida. I can't think of the name of it. Is you that when y'all went to the Carib? That's the name Carib? of it. Carib. C A. Oh wait, is that the place we went? They had the um, it was like the pineapple one. Yeah, the pineapple oh, one. Oh, that one was that was good. Yes. Yeah. They have some really good ones too. So them is probably the top four that I've had that are really good. Bull Rock, Blue Toad, Aces, Hair. And Aces is a West Coast cider. Gotcha. Well, yeah. So we got to get out there and do some exploring so on the safe a, side, you know, of COVID. On the, on the, the safe side. side. On so, the yes, you, I'm going I'm to put that on you because you, I like to plan, but you take it to a different level. So, yeah, I'm going to put that on you. You plan that. Let me know. You know, what, you know at least you didn't say this. Um, if we go, um, you may be used to five star, but. Oh, mm -mm. well, no, no, no. There are, there are no Bretts over here, okay? When he said that, that just took me out. Like, like I get what he's saying. I'm actually on his side about a lot of things, especially about budget. About and budget. for those of you who don't know, we're talking about Mar season 11 of Married at First Sight, one of the couples. And they, they have different views and um, different philosophies on money. Money and what is important and you know their priorities are different i think is the easiest way to say the that. easiest way to put it it is and as a as a person who works in finance it's alarming because i get it because he's saying he's a budgeter and he owns a home and he's planning for the future so he's trying to build wealth and he's trying to build a retirement and he's looking for someone to do that with and he took, he takes delayed gratification to a different level. This is true. Because I, I understand that and all of those things are important. And I don't think, we're not going to get into a whole discussion about that, but I don't think that she doesn't value those things. I think she doesn't have as high of a value because she also, right. she puts a, she values experiences. And so that's yeah. a part of her budget, which I understand and She's big on the now too, so she, so she, she doesn't own, which is nothing wrong with that, because I currently don't own. I have owned, but I don't currently. Own. You know, both of these student loans, I'd own. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that, because maybe she doesn't want to own a house. I don't know, but she doesn't own, and and what got me when she says she has a lot of debt. And well, yeah, that was the part that, like, was like, mm, okay, we she need has to, a lot like, of debt, and she got to rearrange this a little bit. And she spends a lot of money on experiences, especially and eating food. out and travel. So her her meal budget, I think, was like five hundred every two That's weeks. That's crazy. Um, and this is out. She must not have student loans. I don't know what's going on, but I, the way it sounds, the way she was talking, is like she blows a lot of money. So she's a quick spender. As soon as it comes in, it's, it's like going out. And um, they definitely have two different views on money. But when yes. he said he can't afford to take trips, uh, and if they do go on vacation, she got to get used to staying in a one-star or two-star. Mm -mm. mm -mm. We just don't need to go then. We ain't even no need. No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll say uh, one star resort is a, a motel. There ain't no one star resort. I'll stay home. Imagine going to imagine mm-hmm. when we went to Jamaica at seventeen and we was in a one star. You knew that was not happening. I didn't do that when I didn't work. Like when I was in school, I didn't do that. Well, neither one of them are not trying to bend. Like he could, they could offset. Like maybe one year she go with her friends. One year they go together and they say where he done saved up enough to go, but neither one of them are trying to, you know. No, they're they're no compromise, yeah. So it ain't. It we'll see well. how that plays out. Well, I couldn't imagine, you know, a lot of things that we've done, we places we go, I usually plan, and where we reside, as far as where we stay, is a big one because for safety, and we ain't trying to be. You know, with no bugs that we bring back, we you know, it's, we we don't we're not trying to have these issues. So I couldn't imagine, you know, somebody saying, "Well, if we go on vacation, I get married." He'd be like, "Well, we're gonna have to start staying in one star." Mm, no, Ooh. but okay, uh, uh-uh, because this this is this is even thinking about it is like annoying me. So, <laughs> uh, we. But speaking of safety and just cleanliness and, and everything with COVID, um, I want to share with you. So one of the things, I don't know if I told you before, but one of the things I, I do at the end of each episode is I share a random thought. A lot of times they come to me in the shower. Um, I love water. But my random thought for this week, speaking of cleanliness, um, is I learned earlier this year that there are some people for what? Who do not wash their legs regularly. <laughs> I heard this. I saw a meme about it. Yeah, and I had heard it. And then it was like, you know, with COVID and we washing our, I was, it was like, they were all the things they were saying, oh, this is what you should do. Was I'm like, but I do these things regularly. Okay, I can add some more rounds. You know, when I, as soon as I come in, I wash my hands. I do hand sanitizer before and after. But I was in the shower the other day and um as i'm my normal routine i'm washing and i'm i'm washing my legs and it hit me like so people don't do this <laughs> like people not washing their feet so if you don't wash your legs do you not wash your feet either you don't lift your foot up and you know get under the bottom and in between the toes like i mean even if you struggle getting to your foot just put it on the side of the tub and work that thing out yeah, I just I or, put, or put the soap on the floor and rub your foot over the washcloth. You know they got these something. little, you know they got the little things you can put down. I saw a commercial you could put it. Yeah, and just rub your feet on that. Rub your feet. It, I just, mm-hmm. I just, I it it was like, and now it's to the point of almost every time that I go to wash my legs, I'm thinking like, about people really don't. People really don't do this. <laughs> people like don't do how that. I'm just because okay, I when I was taught how to cleanse myself <laughs> that was a part of the process and it's something that i do is all the that, time regularly i don't get it is it that they think their leg don't get dirty well the meme i, I think it was the meme or a post and w- the one that i saw and it, it implied that it was the less melanated um people the, the melanin deficient <laughs> Are the you ones know what to, melon is? You see the you see the melon, the different right. shape. Yeah, you see. <laughs> so I don't I don't know, um, because clearly twenty. You know, I've learned that hey, what is the norm is not the norm, and I don't want to make assumptions. I just I apparently there are some of those of the human race who do not <laughs> value washing their legs regularly or different parts of their body regularly. And I'm not talking about folks who they just don't have the means and that's that's completely different. I'm talking about those who you have the means, you are capable and you wash you wash you washing everything else but your legs. But, but you don't wash your legs every day or all the time. Like why I mean I cleanse regularly, but there are times that you just wash it and you see the dirt come off. So how is it that you think that that's not necessary? You know, the other thing with your legs is if you wear jeans, that dye can rub off on your leg. Not just jeans, but any type of material that just, it gets there. Mm. Sleeping it, sitting around the house, just the dust particles. But 
Anywho, like I said, that's my thought. I just, I don't understand why there, why or how there are people who do not wash their legs regularly. And if you are one of those people, I'm not judging. I'm genuinely curious. Can you help me understand? You might be the same people who be letting their heels or their feet get black. Because I done seen some people with their heels black. And I just don't know how it happened. Mm-mm. Okay, you know what? On that note, we we are going to wrap this up because that is just- my well. My last thought is um, there are people Mm-mm. who be stealing. Mm-hmm. Did you say there are people who be stealing? Yeah, stealing, and I'm serious. I That's mean, that, where did that come from? <laughs> because I think back. I thought back today, and I got a little tickled at myself, but I, at, at my former employment, place of employment for many years, they had a donation box of hats and gloves, and somebody stole the donation box. Now, I, I just want to know, girl, donations was gone. <sighs> It had some gloves. They are so generous. So it made me think about that people be stealing because I couldn't find my umbrella. And you know the first thing I did. Who done stole it? Um, <laughs> Who done stole my umbrella? I found it. And uh, my friend at work was like, see, you done went around here accusing folks of stealing the umbrella. And I said, no, people do be stealing because people stole the donations out the donation yeah. Crazy, they just take so you know, if they steal donations, you know, somebody is still something. But you know, she said, you know, us black people quit that you somebody that stole them, um, <laughs> you know, like your umbrella or something. But right, people, so. people it, it's amazing though, people that stole the donation out the donation box. I, I'm, I'm just gonna say they must have really been in need. That's what I'm gonna say. I hope so. Because. So so okay, so we got two two thoughts because you have contributed in the nut. So two. Why don't people where did the where's the logic in not washing your legs and not needing to wash your legs? And why would you steal from a donation box? That is the whole premise of it is to give to those who are less fortunate. People are less so, fortunate. You know, inquiring minds want to know. Um so yes, there you have it. The random shower thoughts or thoughts for this week. Uh, but Crystal, I want to thank you for joining me. Um, Thanks for having me. And, and, and I'm sorry I took over your moment at the end. I didn't know that was hey, one random thought. No, I'm, it's open, and what I'm happy because I have them. I'm full of them, so, and I. But so it's it's nice to know that others have them as well. And, you know, like I said, for those listening, watching, I want to hear from you, you know, what your thoughts are on these random thoughts. And then also, if you have what some of your random thoughts are, um, if you have some you want me to share, all that good stuff, let me know in the comments. You can send a, if you're listening, um, you can send a voice note, uh, comment. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. For those of you listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to rate it, uh, comment, like. Uh, Crystal, where can they, if you would like for them to find you or follow you on social media, where can they find you? Um, my social media on Instagram is... <laughs> you had to go. I have to look at y'all. This is how bad it is because I can't even remember my name. Y'all got to bear with me because I don't be on there like, you know, like, um, I, like a lot of people, you know, be on be on be quick to give a social media hand social media handle but mine is a natural girl with curls um you can find me there um i'm a natural girl with curls they twisted up right now though um and i do want to say um i'm appreciative for you having me i'm really proud of the great things you do on your podcast i'll be tuned in um like everybody else so i'm really proud of you taking a step out doing what you enjoy doing um so yeah and that's what we're coming out well thank you you're welcome i appreciate you and you know i don't know if you can see it one of my one of my prints behind me Uh, hello april um and i don't think i mentioned it the other day when i posted it but it's they're from pardon my fro 
another shout out. Right my and they are out of Charlotte, North Carolina. 704, y'all. 704. <laughs> I didn't see, okay, that makes more sense. I didn't realize they were based in North Carolina, but I do love all of their stuff. Um, so I'll be sure, you know, all of the people that we mentioned, I'll make sure I put that in the show notes and the comments. Um, but like I said, thank you all for listening. Um, remember, life is a journey, not a destination. And although it does not look or feel like it all the time, in the end, it is all good. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>